So, it seems like I'm in a haunted house now. I don't know why, it was Halloween, so I just decided, why not? I'll go in. So, um, right now, I would like to continue, but there's a door in my way. But I am feeling a bit rebellious today, so... Why not? I'll go in. So, I guess I'm in now. Well, um, can't see much. So, uh, I don't know, I'll just pull on this string thing and... Is that light? This haunted house really is scarier than I thought. Uh, so... This room looks pretty- <gasps> <gasps> This haunted house really is scary. Well, a haunted house can't stop me from playing video games. Especially Nintendo games. So it seems when we entered the cartridge, this is actually a collection of five games. I'm gonna go with two. That was just a misinput, I swear. Five Nights at Freddy's, released by Scott Coffin in 2014 on PC. The game started out as a Kickstarter, but ended up getting cancelled fairly early on. It was inspired by one of Scott's earlier games, Chipper and Sons Lumber Company. Its design was criticized for having characters that looked like Chuck E. Cheese animatronic, so we decided to use that criticism to create Five Nights at Freddy's. When we get onto the title screen, I can already tell why this is a horror game. Is that a bear? So, when we start the game, we learn that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is hiring for a new night guard, and that night guard, of course, is us. So, on the first night, we get introduced to Phone Guy. He's mostly here to deliver us something the Five Nights at Freddy's series is known for. So, this is Five Nights at Freddy's. In this game, you use both the left and right doors to defend yourself from animatronics, as well as using the camera to see where the animatronics are located. There are four main animatronics you have to worry about in this game. First, there's Freddy Fazbear, the basically icon of the whole series at this point. He's a bear with a uh, bow tie and a top hat, and he's the singer in this animatronic band. Then, there is Bonnie. He is a purple bunny and he plays the guitar. Next up, there's Chica. She has a white bib that says, let's eat on it. I, I don't know what she's eating. A uh, brains? Wrong. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day too, but then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Truly bad timing. Finally, there is Foxy, who is a fox and a pirate. Truly one of the most terrifying combinations. Speaking of the cameras, the cameras are so important and integral to Five Nights at Freddy's. Even if they don't really do much besides defending yourself from Foxy and Freddy, the cameras are each like frame of the camera that you see is just so well made and so well done. Some are really creepy and just it's, they're all really well made. Some are better than others, definitely, but there are some that are just so good. Night one is pretty simple. No animatronics really attack you, which is good, and you just kind of get used to the layout of the pizzeria and all the cameras and stuff. The animatronics will only really start to get active when it's around 5 to 4 a.m., so there's not much to worry about in this night. This is where we really start learning about the atmosphere of the game. The atmosphere in this game is so good. The buzzing sound from the fan, the sound of switching cameras, the random music that'll sometimes play, like the music box that'll occasionally go off on the cameras, and the uh, Pirate's Cove music that Foxy sometimes sings, all just add to this eeriness and this atmosphere that this game is trying to portray, which is really good. This is where we get introduced to the animatronics mechanics, really. Bonnie starts off from coming to the left door, while Chica goes to the right door. Foxy is a different case, however. You have to keep checking him on the camera, and if you don't, he'll uh, kill you. In Nights 2 and 3, things are about the same, but definitely more difficult. Foxy becomes more active, so does Bonnie and Chica. And on Night 3, you start getting introduced to Freddy's mechanic. Freddy will move around the pizzeria, and you'll hear his laugh. And to stop him from continuously moving, you'll have to check on his camera as well. Kind of a mix of all of the animatronic characters combined. 
Night 4 is when things really start to get difficult, but it's a bit of the same thing. Night 5 is when things really get interesting, because everything becomes like 10 times more difficult than the first night. All of the animatronics are active and constantly moving. You have to constantly protect yourself while conserving power. This uh, is really, really good. It's hard, but it's not too hard, and I got close so many times, but it all felt worth it in the end when I was able to beat it. And when you do beat it, you get $120. So, that was Five Nights at Freddy's. We're done all five nights. There's obviously nothing left. Are you kidding me? So night six is basically, all it is is a harder version of night five. It's uh, definitely hard and I haven't really beaten this one yet, to be honest. So, that was night six. It's called Five Nights at Freddy's. You're supposed to have five nights, okay? I don't, like, there can't be a seventh night. There just cannot be a seventh night. Probably just stop talking. This is just false advertising at this point. Custom Night is just a mode where you're allowed to customize all of the animatronics difficulty. I've heard of this cool like combination online, I should probably try it. Was that a screaming JPEG? Oh wait. I know what this is. That is... <laughs> One more thing I have to mention are cheats. Cheats just basically make, like, nights easier with unlimited power or faster nights or radar map to see where everyone is. It doesn't add too much, but it definitely makes the game easier. So, that was Five Nights at Freddy's. It was definitely better than I expected. It had some great atmosphere that left you on your toes and actually got you scared during a jump scare. It had these little hallucinations that kind of put you on edge. These sounds and music, well, music in quotation marks, that really added to the experience. If they weren't in there, there wouldn't be much atmosphere at all. So that is really great about it. The gameplay is definitely simple and I liked that they kept the story simple for at least the first game, because if you know anything about this series, it does get pretty confusing later on. Five Nights at Freddy's became big even before it came out, with popular YouTubers playing the demo, which only featured like the first three nights. It got a lot of merchandise because of this traction and because of all the sequels, things like action figures, posters, plushies, and, and just so much more. This series has become basically a cultural icon at this point. It has a movie in production, it has a game now that's coming out in December, seven years after the original game release, and I think that could be due to a few big factors, one of which being the story. The story was kept pretty simple in the first game, but got expanded game by game, which got people theorizing and creating for the game. Even though I'm not really into 100% dissecting the lore, I just like the gameplay and stuff. I do think this is a very important part of the community. But I think there's actually just one big thing. It's a small part of the game, but it's what allowed the game to become as popular as it was. Jump scares have been in every Five Nights at Freddy's game, and it really helped it succeed. Seeing people's reaction to just getting scared, especially in such a good atmosphere like Five Nights at Freddy's, really allowed the game to get popular because so many YouTubers, you know, were getting scared by it, so they were making videos on it, and then more people got to see the game, and then they bought the game, and then it just um, became more successful. The jump scares in this game, though, aren't as good as in other games, but they aren't as bad as in some other games, too. They have some decent jump scares like Freddy's, but they also have some mad jump scares like Foxy's, who just comes in from the left door, which doesn't really work. It's just, something feels lacking with these jump scares. A lot of the time, the characters are just kind of shaking the camera, and 
that's okay, but compared to other jump scares where they're literally jumping at you, something just kind of feels lacking. So, that was Five Nights at Freddy. It's definitely a good game. It has some great atmosphere and simple but complex gameplay. Each animatronic has some great character designs, I like them all. And this game is just so much fun. It makes sense why it got so many sequels and became as popular as it did. So, I think I'm done here. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna take the game with me too. I'll probably, uh, you know what? I'll try, uh, two. Why not? I wasn't able to try. I probably should get my controller fixed. Thank <laughs> you.